Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Study Call with Chief McCoy. In today's video, we will discuss how ships transform seawater into fresh water. In the previous episodes, I've shown you the freshwater cooling system and how heat exchangers work. We know that ships utilize seawater as it is very abundant at sea, but apparently ships still require fresh water for a lot of things wherein seawater will be unsuitable for use. So where do ships get their fresh water? For ships doing exclusively coastal voyages, it's quite easy as fresh water is usually supplied when they are in port. They simply place an order, then a supplier comes, connects the hose, and fills up the water tanks. But for ocean-going vessels, which go on voyages for weeks or even months without calling into port, the only option is to produce their own fresh water. They do this by using what we call a freshwater generator. There are two popular types of freshwater generators. The first type utilizes the process of distillation and the other is by reverse osmosis. Now for this episode, we will only discuss distillation as it is by far more commonly used in commercial shipping. We will touch on reverse osmosis in another episode. Let's go back to basics for a bit. Distillation is the action of purifying a liquid through the process of evaporation and condensation. On that note, evaporation is when liquid turns into gas, and condensation is when gas turns into liquid. To put things simply, seawater is basically a mixture of fresh water and salt, and a few other minerals like calcium and other stuff. Now, if we apply heat to seawater, it will eventually boil and evaporate and turn into steam. When it does, the heavier minerals like salt will be left behind. Now, if we cool down steam, it will condense and turn into distilled water, which theoretically should be pure H2O, otherwise known as fresh water. Obviously, ships need to do this on a large scale and distillation plants on board cargo ships are typically designed to produce somewhere between 15 to 50 tons of fresh water per day. Sometimes more, depending on the ship type and fresh water requirements. Distillation plants are basically heat exchangers and similar to other types of heat exchangers, they come either as tube type or plate type designs. Either way, the principle of operation is basically the same. The most prominent feature of the distillation plant is the shell, which is an airtight casing. The inside of the shell is divided between the evaporator and the condenser. Other important components include the ejector pump, the eductor nozzle, the distillate pump, and the salinometer. So how does the distillation plant work? Let's go through the simple explanation first. The flow of operation begins when the seawater enters the evaporator. From there, it absorbs heat and evaporates, passes through a baffle screen to filter out remaining impurities, and then comes into contact with the condenser tubes where it is cooled down and eventually condenses back into liquid, but this time without the salt content. Now, this condensate is collected in the liquid receiver which is directly below the condenser tubes where it is then suctioned by the condensate pump. The condensate pump's function is to deliver the fresh water into the fresh water tanks, but before it could go there, it is sampled and analyzed by the salinometer. If the remaining salt content is below 10 parts per million, the fresh water is delivered into the tanks. If it's higher than 10 ppm, it is diverted to go back to the evaporator. 
Sounds simple, right? Well, not exactly. For us to fully understand how the distillation plant works, we need to dive into a few more details and learn the function of each major component and see how the fluid reacts when passing through each of them. Now, let's dive into the detailed explanation. First of all, for optimal performance, distillation plants are used when the ship is underway. That is to say, when the main engine is running at navigation speed. This is mainly because the seawater is cleaner in the deep and open sea as compared to near land where the water is shallow and might contain mud and other contaminants. And also, the heating medium used by the evaporator to boil the seawater comes from the main engine jacket water, which has a temperature of around 80 to 85 degrees Celsius. Wait, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius, right? So how could we boil it at 80 degrees? Well, it's true. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at sea level atmospheric pressure, which is around one bar. But if we apply the combined gas law, which is the combination of Boyle's, Charles, and Gay-Lussac's law, the boiling point will decrease if the atmospheric pressure will also decrease. But how exactly will we be able to decrease the atmospheric pressure? Earlier, I mentioned that the shell is an airtight casing, which gives us the potential to create a vacuum inside the shell. Now, just for clarity's sake, when we say vacuum, it means that the gas pressure inside the shell is much lower than the atmospheric pressure at sea level. So basically, much lower than one bar. So during operation, the ejector pump suctions water from the main seawater line, and from there, it will pass through the eductor. An eductor is a type of pump which utilizes the Venturi effect, which in simple terms only requires a fluid moving at high velocity as the driving medium, going past a nozzle to generate suction. Now, the eductor suction line is tapped into the shell, so when the fast-moving seawater goes through the eductor, it will generate a drop in pressure which will suction the air and other fluid particles and create a vacuum, effectively lowering the atmospheric pressure inside. So, the shell vacuum eventually becomes low enough to allow the seawater to boil at temperatures lower than 80 degrees Celsius. On a side note, as you can see, the distillation plant is designed to allow the ship's power plant to recover waste heat from the main engine jacket water and utilize that heat energy instead of just throwing it out at sea. Now from the adductor, the seawater will pass through the condenser's cooling tubes as the cooling medium. In there, it absorbs the heat from the steam produced by the evaporator. Upon leaving the condenser, some of the seawater goes into the evaporator area as feed water. Now inside the evaporator, it will pass through the tubes heated by the jacket water until it evaporates and leaves behind the salt and other heavier particles which will be discarded by the adductor. Now the steam will rise and will pass through a wire mesh baffle for filtration and comes into contact with the condenser tubes. The cooling effect will cause the steam to condense and the resulting liquid will be collected in the liquid receiver and then suctioned by the distillate pump. From there, the fresh water will be sampled and analyzed by the salinometer. The salinometer is a device which determines water purity in terms of absence of salt by measuring electrical conductivity. The concept is basically Pure water has a high resistance to electrical flow as compared to salt water which has a high electrical conductivity. Therefore, the higher the current flow means more salt content. So if the measured salinity is above 10 ppm, a magnetic valve activates and diverts the flow of fresh water back into the evaporator. But if the water salinity is below 10 ppm, it is then delivered into the ship's freshwater storage tanks. 
As I mentioned earlier, distillation plants are either tube type or plate type designs. I showed the tube type in my visual aids, but the principle of operation is exactly the same. I hope you enjoyed and learned something from this episode. We will have more topics to discuss in the future, but for now, class dismissed.